In this video, I'm going to look at how to create a quiz in SAP Enable Now. Now, this is a quiz which is a graded assessment where the user earns points for questions they answer correctly and they have to get a certain score to pass. Typically, you would use this where you want to make sure that the users have learnt what you've taught them, um, possibly score it and load it into an LMS. It's distinct from questions on book pages, which are really used for knowledge check type of activities. I have a separate video on that over on the YouTube page. If you're interested, I'll drop the link into the comments below. Here we're looking specifically at a quiz object. I'm not going to cover how to create a quiz template in this video. Although a quiz template is absolutely essential for the creation of a quiz, it's a much longer activity. The best thing to do is to go to the Info Center for Enable Now, and under Content and Templates, you'll find there's a section for quiz templates. This has several templates that SAP provide by default, and the easiest thing to do if you're just getting started with quizzes is to take one of their templates, maybe tweak it to your own styles and standards, and use that. If you really want to build your own quiz template, I have a blog post over on enablenowexpert.com which explains exactly how to do it. It's fairly lengthy though and fairly involved, but if you want to do that, all of the instructions are there. So for today, I'm going to look purely at creating a quiz assuming you already have a template. And I have a template over here this is the template I'm going to use. Again, I'm not going to go into the details other than to point out that it has a lot of objects in here and they must have certain names to be used by the quiz functionality. The main thing in here is the quiz element. This is really the glue that holds it all together and allows the communication between the question and the answers and the user and how it's displayed in the browser. This has in it the names of all of the objects that you need to have in your template so that it all works correctly. The exact type of object doesn't necessarily matter. For example, these feedback ones, which show the user whether they got it right or wrong, either at the question level or the quiz level, that can be a text object, it can be a shape object, it can be a bubble object. It doesn't really matter as long as it has this name in here. But at this stage, I already have my quiz template created. What I'm going to do is create a quiz that uses this already existing template. So I will go straight into creating a quiz object. I'll click New Object as usual, and under Rapid Learning, I have a quiz object type. I'll select that and then give it a suitable name. Now, first thing to note of importance is the template here is not my quiz question template, which I created earlier and just displayed. That is, as my naming here suggests, for the quiz questions, the questions within the quiz. The template here, if you select one, is going to be an existing quiz that you really want to use as a starting point. It's not the quiz template. Okay, so that's an important thing to understand here. So I'll click OK to create this. And I'm thrown into the editor, which looks very, very much like the standard project editor that you're familiar with, probably from simulations, etc. It has a start macro. It has an end macro. So let's now start to put questions into this. I always like to create a new step to put them into. This is entirely optional, but I find it keeps things a bit tidier. I have a title in here. I can give it a title of that can appear in the progress bar if you choose to have the progress bar displayed. Otherwise, it's, it's really just for your reference. So I now have a quiz that's completely empty and I can start adding my questions into this. That's done via this option here, insert quiz item. If I select that, I see that I have all of these 10 question types and a couple of other ones that we'll look at later, a bit special ones. I'm going to choose a multiple choice question. Everyone understands those. So let me create one of those. That's inserted that question for me. You can see that my page has a bunch of blocks on it that are required for having certain information in them. But the key thing here is the template field. This is where we select our quiz question template. So in here, I'll select the one that we used earlier. As soon as I select that, you can see that I now have 
some better formatting in here. I've got bubbles, I've got my usual branding on here, etc, etc. And now I can just start to enter my actual question details. So let me quickly go ahead and do that now. I'll give it a title, which is really just, what's this question about? This is a good way of perhaps categorizing your questions. The task is the actual question itself. What is it that you're asking the users? And then you have your answers. And there's usually space for up to eight answers. Depends on the type of question. But there's answers and then more answers if you need more than four. So let me insert my answers into that to complete my question of what I'm asking the users. And then I need to select the correct answer. Now, depending on the type of question, there are probably other options down here as well. In this case, for example, I can select Shuffle Solutions, which will shuffle the, the available answers to the user so they're not in the same order every time they run this. And in this case, I've got Force Multiple Choice because this is there is only one correct answer, so it uses circles, which implies to the user there is only one choice. It's kind of like a radio button. And Force Multiple Choice will make it check boxes so it, they don't know whether there's one answer or multiple answers in here and time limit to will come back to in a minute. So this is my completed question, and this will now work correctly. If I play this back, I have my title, I have my question, I have my answers, and then when I select the correct answer, click Next, I get my results there. So this all works good with one question in it. So all we've had to do here really is provide the actual question details. We've got an optional title, the task and the answers, and then a few other options. Everything else is controlled by this template, which we've built out already. So let me add a few more questions to this, and then we'll look at some additional functionality that we have with this. So I now have a quiz with 10 questions in it. I've just added one of each type, just for the fun of it, to show some variation in here. Now, let's look at some other interesting functionality on this. First, I'll look at a quiz section. This is one of the options on the Insert Quiz Item menu here. I select Quiz Section. I had the step selected before I inserted it, so it put all of the questions in that step within the section. But you can drag and drop questions outside of a quiz section or back into a quiz section as you want. What the quiz section does is it effectively treats all of the questions within it as a bucket and then you have options to say how many questions of that section you want to include. So if I select this quiz section begin, you see I have a couple of options in here. The type one is the most important here. And this random choice says that it's going to select one question at random from that bank of questions. And they will get two points if they answer it correctly. But I have other options in here. I can get it to shuffle all of those questions so the questions appear in a different order to the user. And there's also shuffle quizzes number. And I can say in here I want to pick five questions at random from these 10 questions and present those to the users. So that's what a quiz section does. Very useful feature to have. Now, the next thing I want to look at is how the user is scored on this. Every single question has a number of points available for it, okay? Each one has a number of points. And where you specify how many points the user needs to get is in the simulation start macro, very similar to a simulation in test mode. And here I can see there's a maximum score, which is the number of points available for all of the questions. I have 10 questions worth a point each and the maximum score is 10, and the required score is how much the user needs to score in order to pass. So the maximum score is calculated automatically by virtue of the number of points on the questions, and to calculate the required score, as with simulations, I click on this update button here, and it says, what's the percentage pass mark? Here I, it's set to 80%, so the user has to score eight points. So that's how that scoring is done. Next, let's look at timing. Timing is an interesting thing. You can set a time limit for a question and for the quiz as a whole. At the question level, 
that timing is set under options. I can say in here there is a time limit of 20 seconds to answer this question and there will be a countdown. There wasn't one shown displayed earlier because I didn't have a time limit specified so it just doesn't display these labels. But we'll see in a minute what this does. So say I have a 20 second time limit for this question. Now the time limit for the overall quiz is slightly different. That's actually handled via tools settings under general quiz you'll find the default for all quizzes and that's in here under time limit for complete quiz but there's also the project overrides where you would set it per actual quiz so in here for example I am going to set a time limit of say 120 seconds give them two minutes I'll apply that and now let's look at how that looks during playback so I'll play this quiz and now you can see that I have a countdown for the question which started at 20 and for the quiz that started at two minutes. So that's how the timers work. Now at the end of the quiz you'll typically want to show the user their results. This is kind of optional but typically again you would want to do this. That's done using our last type of quiz item. And that needs to go after all of the questions. So I'm going to put it into my, my finish step here. Back to insert quiz item and select quiz evaluation. This will give the users the results of how they did. Now note that the quiz evaluation also has a template property. And here's where you need to specify the template that will apply to the quiz evaluation page, which is formatted differently. Now you can build an entirely separate template to use for your quiz evaluation but if you build your standard quiz question template correctly it will also fit that purpose. So here I'm just going to select my existing quiz question template which I know has been formatted to allow the evaluation to be displayed as well. Now let's look at the other properties that we have available to us in here. The format field is an interesting one that allows you to select the format that the evaluation will be displayed in. There are several options in here. Typically the difference between them is how much information is presented to the users, whether it's just their final score or it's their score and their answers or the score and their answers and the actual correct answers. So I would suggest you try those, see which one works best for you and then choose that. For this, I'm going to keep the standard one of compact detailed feedback. The send track completion flag. If you want to make sure that the results are sent back to the LMS correctly, that's worth checking that one there. Now let's look at the feedback text that can be provided to the users as part of that quiz evaluation. This is entirely optional, but typically you'd want to have some kind of text of congratulations, you passed this assessment or sorry you failed, please try again. Now there's a few different places you can provide that information. If you want to set it up as a default, that is going to be in tools, settings, and under playback settings, you have a general setting here. Under the quiz category here, these are the defaults that will be applied to every single quiz that you create. So here you can see I have a text of well done if they pass the quiz, the other two are blank for now. This is again going to apply to all quizzes. If you want to specify specific feedback texts for this one quiz that you are currently editing, go to project overrides. This works the same way as simulations. This is the settings that are specific to this particular quiz. And here I can provide additional texts if I want to. So I'll provide a quiz failed text. And I can provide a separate text for if the quiz timed out before they had the chance to finish it. Okay, so these are now the defaults for this particular quiz. I'll apply those and come back to here. So that's if you want to specify them for all quizzes as a, as a default, if you want to provide them for this particular quiz, or you can also provide them in here, in the actual quiz itself. So that's all at the quiz level. 
There's also feedback that you can provide at the question level as well, and that's done slightly differently. If I select my question here, I can see that I have quiz passed, failed, and timeout values for that as well. Again, I can specify defaults that will apply to all questions. That really has to be done at the question type level though. Again, it's back into tools, settings, but here we have to go to the macro fallback defaults and then under quiz items, you can see I have the different question types and for each of these under feedback, that's where I would provide the default feedback that will apply to all questions in all quizzes of a type multiple choice. But you can also specify it at the question level within the quiz itself. And this I generally recommend because you would typically want to provide specific feedback for each individual question rather than just generic text, especially with the quiz failed option because you probably want to tell them where they need to go and review the training material so that they can pass it next time. So I will enter some text in here for these three within my question itself. Okay, and now let's look at how that appears during playback. Here's my question and I select the correct answer, click next, and here's my feedback text provided for me. That's at the question level, and then at the final assessment level, here's what I get. Here's my well done text, which is my feedback at the quiz level. Okay, so that is how the feedback works. And that's the last thing that we need to look at with quizzes. Again, assuming you have a quiz question template set up correctly, everything is as easy as just adding your questions via this button here, and then entering the key information about them, title optionally, task, and then the answers, and then ideally some feedback as well. What I would suggest you do is create a sample quiz that has, for example, the quiz evaluation in it with the right template applied to it, maybe a couple of sample questions, and all of the defaults set at the project level in tools, settings, projects, overrides, that has all of the settings in that correctly, the way you want them, and then whenever you create a new quiz, do it based on that sample quiz, which in turn uses the quiz question templates, and that will give you a head start on creating the rest of your quizzes consistently using the right default settings that you want to be using for all of your quizzes. Hope you found that useful. If you did, please subscribe to this YouTube channel and thanks for watching.